morning everybody welcome back um, I haven't done much in a while I shouldn't say that I haven't I haven't posted a video in a while I've done a few things but the recordings of the videos didn't go so great um, you guys missed out on my first uh, 4,000 foot climb and then I did another overnighter or two since then uh, but the filming didn't go that great so I didn't end up posting them uh, my climb actually it was in May and there was quite a bit of snow and it got to the point where it just wasn't safe really for me to film anymore um, mostly due to lack of experience so I just put the camera up and finished what I was doing uh, but anyways so I'm heading out of Rhode Island now I just grabbed my coffee and I have about a two hour and 45 minute drive ahead of me that's assuming there are no stops and you know no traffic which I can promise you there will be in this area it's already um, it's already raining on me in about 60 degrees in August go figure so I thought I was gonna get a nice summer paddle in but it doesn't look like that's gonna be the case so whatever we'll make the best of it right so I'll head up there um, it's like should be in the 60s or 70s tops and you know maybe it's like a 20 percent chance of rain i think so i'll start my drive and um, we'll see you soon what's going on everybody uh so we finished our trek trek being in the car i am now on squam lake i'm finally here after a grueling two and a half well two hours and 45 minutes it wasn't a big deal it's a nice ride aren't a lot of folks on the road right now so that's good uh i just put in and i'm paddling out paddling out of the little cove here take a look it's pretty cool um my free bundle of firewood because it's on an island um i will be camping on the island for the evening and they don't want you foraging for firewood and things like that because Obviously, it's a small island with like three sites on it. So, um, you know, it could get picked over pretty clean. So we want to decrease the impact. So they give you the bundle of firewood with your site reservation. So I'm going to get out of this little cove here. See behind me where I launched and I'll check back in with you pretty soon. Get a load of this, folks. This is the view from my office. Videos and pictures uh, really never do this stuff justice out here. It's kind of unfortunate. So you try to take some solid video of some, what looks to you like some breathtaking views and you just, it doesn't do much good. So uh, it's about 60 degrees, 61 degrees, and it's a little gray, as you can see. You got some, oh, where are we at? Whoa clouds up there <laughs> it's a little gray so and as you can see there is next to nobody out here on this lake just little old me so i'm heading over to one of those islands off to my left in front of me so i'll start my adventure out there and that's where i'll be staying the night um i brought my uh, hammock set up so that should be Pretty comfy it's nice and cool 
the bugs are at a minimum so i'm gonna get some paddling done so i'll see you in a bit Aside from being a little gray today, it's pretty nice out here. Really my first time with this boat out on the open water like this. The lake's pretty massive. Um, it's probably it's small in comparison to some of the other lakes up here, but uh, this is my uh, Discovery 119, uh, my Old Town Discovery 119. Um, probably about the third time I've had it out. And uh, the water's a little rough, it's a little windy. Maybe you can hear that, but it's not too, too bad. But it certainly is peaceful out here, so um, I'll show you what we're working with. So, eh, it's a little choppy. It's not bad. It's a little bit worse than it looks, but um, we're heading to, I think, this island right over here. Um, that's where the campsite is, but, I mean, we're out. We're out in the middle. It's pretty. The water's you know, pretty nice and it's clean, it's clear. It's not like, uh, it's not like Rhode Island for sure. But uh, I just figured I'd check in with you guys, show you some of this. Again, it's pretty amazing the difference between the camera and what you see. The mountains around here are pretty, are pretty awesome. So I'm gonna just make sure that I'm locked in and direction wise and get back to paddling and see you again in a little bit. Probably when we, when we hit the island, I'll check in again. Talk to you soon. All right, folks, I don't know if you can hear me. Dead ahead is Bowman Island. Here's the camper dock. The water is a little bit rough. I'm kind of nervous about this approach. <laughs> you can hear the water, see the water hitting the rocks up there. I got snagged this dock over there without busting my butt or getting wet, so. Let's see if we can backpedal here and slow down a bit. Grab one of these old rails. All right, I think we're good. Sorry about that, folks. Ah, here we are. Oh, Bowman Island. It's my first time out here. Pretty cool setup so far. There's a couple of sites on this island. Um, I'm not quite sure. There's a pontoon here tied off. Not quite sure how uh, folks usually tie off the canoes. Pull them off or what? Since I'm a newbie. Worst case, I climb out and then take my canoe and pump it over to my site, which I guess would give me some uh, portage practice. <laughs> so that wouldn't be that big of a deal. But all right, let me get out of here and get this boat out of the water. I'll check in uh, when we find my site. Well, all right, folks. I'm off the water. I didn't end up in the drink. Got the boat up. Uh, from the looks of it, other folks have their boats and kayaks by their site. So I'm going to go ahead and carry my gear to the site. And then uh, I'll just come back, grab my boat, carry it over. It's just a short hike. Like I said, it'll give me some uh, portaging practice. 
and it'll be good for you. But uh, yeah, let's check out the scenery. So I got all my stuff here. I did pack heavy, um, but I can because I didn't have to hike. So I have all of my uh, stuff. And like I said, they give you the bundle of wood. I brought my little cooler here with my food in it. Uh, normally I wouldn't do that, um, but it's a pretty sweet setup. So paddle a couple miles out to this island and then uh, you head into the woods to your site. Um, but yeah, like I said, normally I would pack a lot lighter than this, you know, especially if I was hiking or staying in the mountains. Um, I planned on, this is more of a, you know, just a fun, relaxing camping um, endeavor instead of, uh, holy cow, like this gorilla. Um, more than more than like a survival thing or you know sharpening skills just hanging out and hopefully making some good food so all right let me get this stuff to the site and uh we'll check in when we get there and show you where we'll be staying for the night okay so plan b um on my little hike into the uh on my hike into the sites on a little trail here you can see where we come in, come in right here, and head down this way to the campsites. Um, there's this cool little spot here. Folks are stashing their boat. So I'm gonna go ahead and hop back in the water, probably, and then park it right there. Yeah, actually, it's probably only about a 25 yard walk. I'll just pull her out, carry it. But, and you guys like the shirt? I generally try to blend into my surroundings, you know, so I figured I'd go with the Superman camouflage. That was a joke. All right. And look at it. This place is pretty cool. Somebody was kind enough to leave a, leave a grill for us. And they got a pretty good thing going here. There's firewood. Um, you know stored over here for for folks For like five bucks a bundle or something like that the Sun's coming out Got some rain clouds and it is windy you know, Water's a little A little bit rough out in the open out there eh, Out there was a little bit a little bit choppier than I'd like for my lack of uh uh, boating experience, but it wasn't too too bad. So I made it. I didn't get dead uh, It's probably because of this shirt. That's why I wore it honestly to keep me safe That's another joke. But the water is amazing out here, man Crystal clear you can see to the bottom great place So all right Let's get the rest of the crap to the site and uh, maybe I'll do some exploring and check back in with you. Okay, boat's moved and we are we are home. Um, I would have filmed the hike in, but it was only you know 200 yards at best. It's just a small trail, um, but it's a pretty neat place. Uh, it's just me by my all by my lonesome. The site allows for six people. They say. I have just three tent pads, pretty sweet fire pit, um, yeah, some little gifts that were left by the last folks, um, there's a little trail in there that leads down to the water, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome, um, and like I said, I'm here all by myself, so. I'm thinking what I'm gonna do is uh, I didn't bring I didn't bring a tent, um, which was kind of a little bit of a gamble because I didn't know what the sites were like or anything like that, and I did know that they had tent pads. So that being the case, usually the tent pads are the smartest choice. But I think I'm gonna I'm either gonna set up between this one here and this one here, or um, I doubt it'll reach, but this one here to this one here would be ideal with the uh, tent pad to my back because the fire pit would be right there. And I only have my um, the single tarp for 
the hammock set up. So I don't really have one to set up for like a common area or anything like that. So um, that would allow me to kind of sit in the hammock and hang out by the fire. So we'll give it a shot. We'll see if it's long enough. If not, I'll have to stick to the other two trees. No big deal. So I'm going to go start unpacking and getting set up. And I'll check back in with you guys in a little bit when we get uh when we get nice and comfy. Trying out a new hammock today, the sloth cloth bug hammock. Um, if you guys saw my Instagram stuff, I was uh, using a regular old Cedar Summit hammock, which worked great, but this one has built-in um, mosquito net, mosquito mosquito netting. Uh, the other one, I was just uh, using some surplus uh, mosquito netting, which wasn't the greatest. Uh, it worked just fine, but there was excess amounts of it. So we're gonna try out the new sloth cloth today. Now let's see if I can span this gap here. Nope. Definitely not gonna happen. Be six feet if I'm lucky. So. We're going to go ahead and we're going to use plan B over here. We're going to use these two. So, these are a little bit different than my others. So they one ring on the end here and you slide the strap it through. It's amazing what a squirrel sounds like in the woods. Slide the strap through and then you have a few different rings you can adjust the hammock with. So get that started and check in on that. So the uh, hammock set up and then the mosquito netting that's incorporated is also set up. So, so far I like that, but I don't really have um, the ideal setup here as far as um, the placement of the strap. Um, they're a little bit too close together, but because of the trees, um, the trees here, it's been kind of a pain. I actually um i actually tried a few different a few different areas and uh, this one really is the best so i came back to the first one um so the straps are pretty short so they're a little problematic but you can check it out so we got. really easy to set up 
throw the strap around um, on both sides. Throw your strap around, you pull it through the little loop, the tension keeps it up there, and then you clip your carabiner into you know, the different loops for whatever length you need. Um, and then you just pull the string out of here and fasten that to the tree as well. So you got your mosquito netting and your hammock. And then um, the zipper's here to get in. Uh, so what I need to do now is run a ridge line to set up my tarp. So that's what we're going to do now. So ridge line, and then I need to eat something because I'm fat and I'm hungry. All right, so the cordage, my cordage to go from one side to the other has come up a bit short. So I'm going to connect the two pieces that I have. Um, I should have a longer piece. I at some point obviously cut it and didn't put a, didn't replace my ridge line piece. So what we're going to do is just take the two pieces and kind of overlap them. Uh, just basically tie an overhand knot. Oops. <laughs> we're going to tie an overhand knot over the top of the other one. That's pretty much your standard run of the mill knot. And then down on the other end, do the same thing. A little bit hard to see, but everybody knows that knot. And so when you pull the two pieces, they will cinch down on each other. And then you can, you know, finish what you were doing. So, go around this side. A secondary challenge of mine has been the thickness of the trees. They're pretty big. So, I'm going to tie a loop over here. trucker's hitch, but I'm not very good at it. And you use that to put tension on your ridge line. You definitely need some practice on the knots. It's obvious, but I don't know uh, but I can get by. <laughs> I'm not I'm not gonna die. So I figure it's better if folks see me struggle and uh, figure out that, you know what, it is possible to learn how to do this stuff. You don't have to be, you know, a professional. Come out in the woods and have a good time. You understand a few basics and, you know, you're good. That's pretty much where I'm at, as you can see, as I struggle with my knots. Pull the slack out. So, she's good. And now, when I want to drop this down, all I got to do is pull this loop out, and the ridge line will come down. I used to be a lot better at it. And I used to use toggles and all that great stuff. Um, but it's been a while. And unfortunately for me, it's not like riding a bike when I forget the knots or I don't use the knots, I forget the knots. So now we'll just go ahead and throw the tarp over.
right folks homes home is set up the sleeping quarters are set up anyways took me longer than I wanted it to as usual yeah it took me like an hour or so to set all this stuff up and really you should be able to get it done a lot faster than that I used probably an excessive amount of cordage and my knots are atrocious but it's not too bad you know like it's only my third time out or something like that doing this stuff and uh I managed to apply a few fundamentals using toggles and you know basic trucker hitches. Um, I still keep screwing up the bowling, which is like one of the easiest ones in the world, and it's embarrassing because I used to be in a, essentially a rope rescue unit, <laughs> or at least they taught rope rescue. Um, but you know, I was the bomb guy. So, in any case, let's take a look. See what we got. So my. Uh, $10 Wish Digital Camouflage Tarp. So we have, uh, if you can see here, my um, UST, the Urban Survival Technologies or some damn thing like that. My bug hammock. And she uh, zippers here and you can climb in. I haven't put my sleeping gear in it yet, but um, we ran our ridge line we got our mosquito net up we got our ridge line up um a couple of prussics a prussic uh, loop or not trying to get it to focus here oh she doesn't want to focus yeah well you can see it so this little guy slides and keeps tension on the toggles and then we've got it staked down and all four corners using some trucker hitch business and the stakes. So I will be in the hammock under the tarp and I'll be good to go. Like I said, not perfect, but it gets the job done. So now I'm going to roll out the sleeping bag, the sleeping mat, let that thing fill up. It's like three o'clock. I wanted to eat lunch, but, um, it's damn near almost dinner time, but I think I'm going to be hungry later on as well. So I'm going to go ahead and maybe I'll break out the Tokes stick stove and heat up my dehydrated lasagna. I think that's what I'll do. All right, back to work. So my um, sleeping mat is an insulated mat. Um, it's supposed to get down to, I think probably four, the 50s maybe. You know, chilly, chilly evening. But uh, so I have my insulated sleeping pad, um, which I usually use in the hammock anyways because I don't have an underquilt. So I have my uh, insulated sleeping mat and. This is my um, 15 degree bag. So I should be good um, warmth wise. And obviously everybody knows that a uh, 15 degree bag 
means doesn't mean you'll be comfortable at 15 degrees. It just means you won't get dead until 15 degrees. And then you're pushing your luck. So we'll get them set up. And a uh, little bit too much of a bend in the hammock. So ideally the trees would be further away, the nose dribbles, and you'd be having a better night's sleep. So I'm definitely going to be a little bit uncomfortable through a certain parts of the night, but hey, I'm out here, right? So, um, oh, one more thing. Picked this up a few weeks ago. It's my climate extra large pillow. We don't want it too taut. Boom, all set up. All right, I was gonna bust out the stick stove and heat up some of the lasagna that I made. I dehydrated some lasagna. I was gonna heat that up for lunch, but it's a bit late. It's about 20 past three in the afternoon. So I think I'm just gonna drink some water eat a snack, maybe do a little exploring, give you guys a tour of the, um, you know, the new digs. And then um, I might, there's a path behind me. It looks like it leads down to the water with a small, little small beach. Might take a walk down there. Take a look around, you know? So, uh, I haven't had any water yet, so. I need to force myself to stop, drink some water, eat a snack. Usually I come out here, not specifically here, but I, you know, I get outdoors and we, you know, I set things up and I'm just kind of, it takes me too long to do that. Everything ends up running later than it's supposed to. And then I get to the end of the day, it's 7 PM. I haven't had any water or anything to eat. And then I'm trying to make, make my food. So. Definitely time management when you're out here is, uh, is, is a skill and it's not that easy to master. The clock runs a lot faster than you think it would. Um, and it happens to me all the time. I always get caught um, not, not really being ready or at the stage that I want to be at yet. So, But it's about 3.20 and the hammock set up. The bags in it, air mattress, or sleeping pad rather I should say. All that stuff is good. I'm gonna stick a snack, a little snacky poo in my face hole, and then maybe go paddle around, check some stuff out. Let's see what we got here. Dark chocolate, sea salt, and almond bar. I just bought it because it said caveman on it. So, cheers. I'll see you guys in a bit. Oh, this is just my little fire bag. I'll usually have some birch bark in there, a little bit of fat wood couple of Bic lighters, got this fat rope stick I got from a battle box deal. This stuff right here, I can't say enough good things about this fiber light fire kit. Um, also came in a battle box uh, kit that I got. It's got this waxy um, fibrous stuff in there. 
and has a a fire steel ferrocium rod and uh, the striker comes out and stuff goes up pretty easily catches a spark like it's nobody's business I just kind of call it magic dust for that reason it's awesome so that stays in my little fire bag pretty much every way you can think of to start a fire is in there and then my Mora has a fire steel on it as well um, so we should be covered I probably don't need it but I just love it my trusty old Gransfer's Brook if I said that right I hope if not I apologize but I bought this is I bought this off a local guy and um, it's it's definitely aged but it's fantastic I don't know if we can see the edge on that puppy, but shave shark. All right, snack time's over. I put on my thin long sleeve top and put on the pants. It's not really that cold. Um, it's probably only, like I said, 60 degrees or so, but I um, figured I'd get you know, do a preemptive strike on the bugs, because I imagine when it gets a little bit um, war uh, darker, and they'll start coming out being a pain in the ass. Um, so yeah, right now, um, there's this little path off of the campsite. There's home. There's my setup. The fire pit in the kitchen over there. And all three of the tent platforms that I'm not using. Anyways, we're going and exploring this little path here. I mean, it is on an island, so there isn't a whole lot of hiking to be had. But this looks like it goes out to the water over here. And there may be a little sandy spot for me to hit the beach on my boat. Instead of leaving it where I did. Not that anybody... I'll bother it there, but let's check this out. Ugh. Spray webs. Oh, this is nice, man. Check it out. Uh, so there is a trail. Looks like it goes goes around the island. No beach, but. Certainly is pretty. I think what I'm going to do, kill a little bit of time and have some fun, is um, head back over to, to the boat and take it out for a little bit. Do some paddling around. See what I see. So, when I get on the water, I'll, uh, I'll check back in. Alright, we are out on the water. It's pretty unbelievable out here. If you guys don't spend any time doing this, you really should think about it. Kind of in the middle of nowhere. It's, it's beautiful. Check it out. Just kind of floating along right now. I may go do some exploring. Paddling around a bit. Um, I keep trying to capture some good pictures or video you know, out here uh, while I'm out on the water, but it's just not really working out. Um, nothing does it, you know, does it any justice. And um, clouds are a little bit gray, but it's not too, too bad. So probably kick around a little bit and then head back to the site and maybe start dinner or something. So I'm pretty excited about that. And I have a, a special little, <laughs> special little treat for myself. So here we are, Squam Lake.
Hey guys, welcome back. Um, fire's getting pretty good. Roasty toasty. We're getting a nice big bed of uh, hot coals built up. Um, probably what I'll do here in a little bit is try to move a bed of coals over and keep the fire going in the back instead of trying to stoke it up again afterwards. In the meantime, it's uh, treat time. Usually I'll bring some sort of a beer or something so that I'm not getting all wasted in the woods and having to paddle out with a hangover. I found these cute little Manhattans in a can. The Club Manhattan, made with premium blended whiskey and vermouth. The whiskey is in it. 17% alcohol, but they're awfully small. So that's the beverage of choice for tonight. And uh, Dennis, you may appreciate this. Um, I didn't bring my titanium cup, so we're gonna have uh, a Manhattan out of my Nalgene uh, sporting the Canoe Hound Adventures um, decal. So check out Dennis's stuff. He just finished the trip. Also, my good buddy Josh at uh, West Virginia Outdoors sent me one of his decals as well. So this evening, look at this. He even brought me a bag of ice for cocktails. I told you that I packed heavy, but I wasn't messing around. So we're gonna have we're gonna have some Manhattans. Yeah. With our dinner, out of an algae bottle. And that fire is getting, getting good, it's about ready. Excuse me. All right, so. Ice goes back in the Ozark Trail softy cooler so that we have some for tomorrow. Cheers, everybody. Thanks for sticking around. Let's see what this. Ooh. <coughs> that was an asthma cough, not a Club Manhattan cough. Not bad. It's definitely not as strong as a regular Manhattan, but we don't want that anyways out here. But <clears throat> pretty good. Nice little sipper. All right. Now I need to, oh, don't forget, take your trash with you kids. Um, now I need to head down to the water over there and grab some, well, grab some water. Um, we will be boiling some this evening, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my pot and head down there and get that taken care of and come back and get dinner on the fire. Scoot the water over a bit. Hand going. Get these larger pieces out of the way. Come here, guys. These are them. These are them saute coals. Get a wee bit of oil.
Daddy, would you like some sausages? Come on, you don't know what movie that's from? Nobody's ever seen Gilbert Grape. Look at that. These chicken sausages going. This entire meal I will be cooking from random items out of my kitchen. I just raided the cabinets and threw something together. And hopefully it turns out pretty nice. what we're doing over here fix your leg there we go normally I bring like a dedicated kitchen knife but I didn't I didn't this time so we're gonna have to make do. Peel this bad boy off. In case you were wondering, folks, this is an onion. We're just gonna give her a rough. Slicing. What's that for the moment? Till these sausages progress a little bit. When we get closer, I'll check back in with you. Alrighty, folks. Let's see what we got here. Yeah. These little sausages. It's working famously. Check the water. A solid boil going. Just give it another minute since we took it out of the lake. She's almost ready. We are almost ready for the next step. In the meantime, I will work on my Manhattan. There we go. All right, we got a good boil going. It's time. Get a load of these. Chicken sausages. Some skeddy. Broke her in half to fit in the baggie here. Drop that right in there. Do a little mix. back on and in the meantime I'm gonna take our little and take our sausages off Yes, I have canola oil in a flask because I know it won't leak. So I put the flask of cooking oil in my pack. Zero worries. Yeah. 
and goes our onions. Did it with the patented all-in-one seasoning. Pretty much different every time. I have some, uh, uh, smells amazing. Some coarse salt, or kosher salt rather, some pepper. Salt, pepper, garlic is the standard really. Rosemary, thyme, a little bit of Cajun seasoning. Pretty much put a little bit of everything in there. Get them all nice and coated. Let those saute up. Probably take the pasta out now. And just let that sit in the hot water to cook the rest of the way. That way we can get this baby on the heat where it belongs. Now we're cooking with gas. Anybody else's father ever say that to him? Anytime cooking was going well, we were cooking with gas. And when dinner was almost ready, it was soup. It's soup. All right. We're just about ready for the next step, folks. This handle straightened back out. I'm gonna need some coals for for the next act. Get it good and hot. Try this at home, kids. What do we suppose this clear substance is here? Who guessed vodka? Here, we have a winner. Woo! Nice. So beautiful. So, so beautiful. The good news is we're not done. <laughs> All right, children. Sorry, I have to move you. All right. I hope every, everybody's having as much fun as I am with this. What's the next step? The next step is add the sausage back into that, that mix. So, bring you over here a little bit. Hopefully you can see. Yes, I bring a cutting board with me every time I leave the house. Well, you know, in the woods anyways. Slice up these puppies. Oh, don't you dare. Get a load of that. Come on in. Take a look. Take a look. Just a little bit of sausage but it's going back in the pan with the rest of everything else.
Oh. No. No. <laughs> it's gone. Huh? Huh? All right, I'm gonna give you a break for a minute while that cooks up. I'm gonna have a little bit more of my uh, Manhattan while I cook my uh, my sausage and onions. The pasta's warming up over there. Things are progressing nicely. So I may even catch that sunset over there. We'll see. Sausage is more important though, so we'll see you in a bit. Give her another tour. These are all um, home chef containers or whatever it's called. I save all of them, they're fantastic. Let's give it another mix. up a little bit we're gonna move off to the side now throw a couple more logs on there so we don't lose her Pull her off to the side a bit. Normally, I'd put a decent amount of heavy cream in here. Um, we have some of these sour cream packets left over from those home chef meals, like I said. So, we're going to use that. I'm going to put that in there instead of the cream. Like I said, pretty much threw all this stuff together real quick. With what was. Ooh, I have a friend. Two friends. I threw this bad boy together with what we had lying around. But a little sour cream goes a long way. It certainly won't taste like pink vodka sauce without the cream I don't think but we'll see pretty snazzy color to it that's for sure holy crap is that hot oh my goodness all 
All right, folks. I'll let it simmer down now. We've added our pasta. Um, use a little bit of the pasta water, threw it all in there. Added the pasta. We're gonna let it reduce a bit and then she'll be ready. I'm excited and I'm sweating. See you in a few. All right, boys and girls. Oh! Whoa! My lucky stick. I think we're done. We're ready. Oh, there we go. Can we see that? Campfire. I'd say sausage and penne, but I didn't have any penne. I had spaghetti. So, sort of a uh, Jimmy rigged. Chicken sausage with sour cream. <laughs> But it does look yummy. Ta-da! Oh, sorry about that. I'm gonna throw another couple of pieces of wood on the fire. I'm gonna wait for this to cool off because if I take a bite of that right now, and the words the great Jim Gaffigan, it'll destroy my mouth. So I'm excited though. We'll see you in a few when it's ready for testing. Right. I think we're ready, folks. I brought a plate, but you know what? I'll skip that. One less thing to get dirty, right? Come here, beautiful. That is not, not disgusting. It's pretty good. Campfire, sausage and pasta with a vodka reduction. Very good, very good. I've got a lot to eat. All right, I'm gonna do as much damage to this as possible and then clean up and I'll be back. Alrighty folks, it is like 7.30 p.m., almost 8 p.m. Um, Dinner was fantastic. I'm done cleaning up camp, basically. Um, sun's just fully setting. Kind of missed the sunset. A little bummed about that, but I had a fire going and I didn't want to leave it. Um, that's kind of bad juju, so. I'm just gonna sit here, um, finish cleaning up a little bit, and then throw the remainder. No, I'm probably not the remainder, still got a couple hours. I might get into that second Manhattan <laughs> and uh, just throw another piece of wood or two on the fire and hang out and uh, check in with you in a little bit. See ya. Oh, Alright folks, it's, uh, I don't know, just after 9pm. I'm not totally exhausted. A little tired, but just kind of sitting by the fire by myself here. <laughs> and you get a little bit uh, sleepy and look forward to bed. So I'm going to go ahead and... Who knows, maybe I'll watch some uh, some bushcrafting videos on YouTube while I'm laying here. Uh, well, overall, pretty good day. Um, did a little bit of paddling. 
Worked on some of my atrocious knots. Um, made some pretty good food. You know, got outside, so I guess that's really the point. Working on your skills and getting outdoors is pretty nice out here. Um, you know, you don't get to do it that often, so it's definitely helpful. In any case, I'm going to sign off and um, relax a little bit and we'll see everybody in the morning. Well, good morning, folks. <sighs> it's a little cool and breezy this morning. Um, it says it's 59 degrees. That's 59 degrees. Fahrenheit, that is, if I have any European or Canadian viewers. Oh. <laughs> I would have stayed in the sack this morning, but I had to pee, so I got up. And well, you know, you don't need to know about that, but get the boots on, <clears throat> get the blood flowing a little bit. I'm going to go get some drinking water out of the lake. I've used this thing a few times. I don't know if you'd say catadine or catadin um, uh, filtration bag. So it's pretty sweet. You just um, fill it up with water out of a water source. It's got a filter in it, antimicrobial filter. And it has instructions on the back. So, and you just squeeze the water out of it and it's drinkable. So we're going to go get some water um, <clears throat> for drinking. And I'm also going to fill up my little stainless steel pot from last night for, uh, for breakfast. So we'll do that and we'll see you in a few.
All right, we're boiling. I can hear it, so I'm gonna move it off a little bit. Keep her next to the fire. Let's get in there. Put together some oatmeal and just reuse this bag. Um, quick oats, cranberries, brown sugar. Um, Sliced almonds. You gotta give it a little shake before you pour it out though. And it's quite filling, so you don't wanna go overboard like I probably just did. Bob's your uncle. We have breakfast. It'll be ready shortly. We'll eat our oatmeal, let the fire die down, finish packing our trash, and get out of here. Battle of the Wounds. <laughs> They've been doing that all morning. It's funny. Actually passed an area on the boat yesterday where there was like a loon chick nesting area. Pretty neat. <laughs> Alright, back to work. Alright everybody, we are just about out of here. The oatmeal is ready. Oh, look at that. Doesn't it look wonderful? And the fire is almost dead. So I'm going to sit here and eat my oatmeal and enjoy my Squam Lake lake water. So oatmeal and lake water for breakfast. Um, and then I will... Uh, finish packing up and head out and probably see you guys at the dock uh, next next check-in. Um, I don't have too much stuff left to do around here, just a couple of things and then I can start humping it over to, to the dock where my boat is still there, hopefully, <laughs> or else I'll be stuck. All right, we'll talk to you in a few.
just like that folks we're ready to go ready to hit the water again so let's say goodbye to all this I don't know if you can see him, little friend floating out there. That may be a, one of the noisy wounds. But, very cool place. Scenery is great. It's pretty neat how you can camp on this island here, but we're ready to get going. So, we're going to hop in and shove off. Biggest problem is yesterday coming in the wind was at my back. Today I got a headwind and I'm kind of paddling into the waves, which sucks. But you know it's not too too bad, it's a little windy out here. I definitely can say Body of water is me. I'm one other guy in a power boat. Let's see if I can get turned around without flipping myself over in the water. Come on now. Check it out.
Beautiful. All right, let's get going. 